So I'm Aditya Vampati and I'm from Syracuse University and uh, today I thought I'll just explain my uh, general uh, work of my thesis on how one can actually achieve reliable inference from unreliable agents. So uh, let's look at the situation when you're trying to have an inference from multiple agents. The reason I use the word agents is because they could be humans or machines. And when you have a system where uh, these agents are multiple agents are observing a phenomenon, the phenomenon could be that of an inference of a, a, a detection, an estimation. So the question is, what happens if these agents are unreliable? For example, uh, one, one of these sensors could be stuck at one, always giving out a one. Uh, a sensor could be attacked by a malicious uh, guy and always sending false information. Or it could be humans who are actually lazy and giving out false information, which end up giving unreliable data. So we're trying to deal with such situations, and what we're trying to do is trying to understand how one can come up with schemes to actually give reliable inference, even these, when these unreliable agents are uh, providing you false information. So we are going to take a leaf out of what Shannon said in one of his unpublished works, where he said that the way to do it is twofold. One is trying to analyze the effect of a bad guy. The second is design system in the presence of these bad guys by doing three things. One is a complete redesign of system, or improving the individual components of the system, or third, using error correction codes. So we are going to use these ideas in trying to understand this. So this is the general contribution list where we actually did it for the case when there are only sensors with unreliabilities due to Byzantines, and that's an estimation problem. We also did with estimation where humans are involved and they're unskilled, and similarly we had other results. Today I'm going to focus on only a few of those. The first one is called the non-regular CEO problem. This is typical of the uh, traditional CEO problem where you have a bunch of uh, agents sending out uh, information about their inference to a centralized unit called the CEO, Chief Executive Officer or Chief Estimation Officer. And the goal is trying to estimate the unknown, which is over here. Uh, the goal is trying to understand how the distortion between the estimate and the uh, true value trades off with the total drum, uh, sum rate constant, where the sum rate is the sum of the rates with, with which these agents are uh, transmitting the data. So the tr traditionally what people have done is looked at the case when the observations are Gaussian or discrete, and they have some results where they show the Gaussian is having a one by R convergence, whereas the total sum rate or uh, exponential in the case of discrete. What we did is, since we are motivated with the situation where there are humans involved, we are looking at a belief sharing problem, as in where humans are sharing their beliefs. Beliefs are uniform distributed. They're non-regular, they, they have a bounded support, and they do not, uh, they're not smooth enough to satisfy regularity conditions. So what we're trying to do is what happens when you have such situations, and what we see is that the uh, distortion now decays at rate one by R square, which is kind of in between your uh, discrete case and the Gaussian observations. So what, uh, what one can summarize this is saying that it's easier to share beliefs than sharing observations, but sharing decisions is the easiest. That's the discrete, uniform versus the Gaussian results. So uh, the way we solved it is the typical CEO analysis, but we changed things, basically used a mid-range estimation rather than mean estimation used in Gaussian, because we are using a uniform distribution, mid-range works better. And for the converse, we use the shazen zakai bound and not the kramer rao bound because the regularity conditions do not satisfy. That's the result when we're actually trying to analyze the effect of unreliable agents. The next step is designing a system in presence of these unreliable agents. For that, we lo look at an example of the reliable crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is where you have multiple crowds uh, observing a phenomenon and giving, out to, uh, giving you out their observations, and we pay them for that. But it's typically done online, so they're anonymous, and they tend to be unreliable. So how do you deal with them when, when you don't have much to do about it? So what we see is that we can use coding approaches to actually improve your performance. So let's look at an example of a classification of a dog breed using an image into four possible classes. When you give out this image to a person and ask which of the four classes it belongs to, it's really almost impossible for everyone to give a good answer because they do not know about dogs. What we do is our approach helps in two ways. One, we end up asking binary questions, which are easier for humans to answer. Rather than asking which of the four breeds it belongs to, you ask a question, is the dog large or small? which is much simpler for humans, or it, does it have a snub nose or long nose. So in this way, you can actually make it improve the components in the system and have better performance. The second thing, the second benefit is since you're using a minimum Hamming distance decoder, you can correct errors due to this unreliable humans. So that's the benefit, uh, the twofold benefit. We actually designed the system on a probabilistic model and we actually designed the optimal code matrix and try to determine the performance for different possible situations. And we show that good codes, or the approach which we use, can actually improve your performance over something called the traditional majority voting, where everyone asks the same question and gives us the same answer. Moving forward, what we want to do is look at the systems with humans and machines together. So these are situations when there are only humans, and we do have some other results where there are only sensors. But moving forward, we want to see what is called the human-machine inference networks, where humans and machines are working together 
to actually do an inference. This is related to uh, understanding the fact that humans and machines have radically different strengths and weaknesses. You'll have to capture these strengths in order to have better improved performance and have a, a task which is much more accurate and much more quick. So this is a general architecture where we have a social network where humans are uh, exchanging their subjective opinions and we have a sensor network where uh, sensors are sharing their objective measurements. So when you look at a, such a joint network, the way sensors send their observations or do their design affects the way so, uh, humans actually interact, that the behavior changes. And the way they behave affects the design of algorithms at the sensors level. So this is what we're trying to observe and we actually looked at two simple problems where it's called the knowledge discovery problem where a machine is helping a human in discovering new ideas, new knowledge, and we're trying to bring a, build a mathematical model for that. But the uh, eventual goal is trying to design a system, uh, the large human machine inference networks where one can help the other, humans can help the machines, and vice versa. That's the basic uh, idea going forward. Thank you.